Hello guys and welcome to Laravel 7 tutorials. So guys in this video we are going to discuss about how can we add our custom fields to Laravel authentication. Basically this is the requirement in most of the cases that you have to implement some custom fields related to that specific project. Okay so the steps we are going to follow are right here. Basically first of all we are going to add our input field to the view. Then we are going to add our field for the validation and then passing the field to the database okay so the most important part is right here basically rolling back the migration so that we can add our custom fields and we can save our data in the database okay so let's start and i will move to git bash and here i'm going to access my project directory cdc xam hd docs and name was i think auth1 yeah you have to access your project directory and respective directory and folder and let's run our project Okay, so our project is up and running. Let's refresh and yes, it is. Now let's move to our registration page so that we can add our field. Let's add our field right here. Let's say it would be a company name. So I will move to resources and right here, new register page. Okay, and here I'm going to copy this specific field and apply the changes that we need. That's it okay so id would be let's say company underscore name that's it and right here company name and right here company name that's it and the most important one the name of the field is right here company name. okay and if we have any sort of error with respect to this field what we are going to do we are going to get it right here in this error right here spent okay so let's just discuss about this input field basically right here you can see we have error right here let's say we have any validation rule fail with respect to this field we are going to apply is invalid class to this input field okay and the next one is basically the old in this case let's say if we submit our form and there was any sort of validation issue with any field we are going to get the old value of this input field with the help of old variable okay and here we are going to get the error with respect to field that's it okay so let's refresh and let's see our field right here let's see if it is or not okay it is taking time okay guys so you can see right here we have a custom field let's change the placeholder right here to from first to company that's it and let's refresh and okay so now we have a placeholder for company name now the next step is to apply the validation to this input field company name and i will move to right here let's close view resources and let's move to app http controllers and right here auth and we are going to register a user so we will move to register controller and here you can see we have a method validator to validate our fields right here okay so we are going to add our fields first let's just do that and in this case uh, right here you can see basically the key parameter is the input field name from right here let me just highlight it for you right here okay we have to pass it right here company underscore name and we want to apply the validation let's say it is going to be required and let's say it is going to be a string okay and let's say it would be minimum of three characters that's it okay okay so now when we submit our form from right here we are going to hit basically this specific method let me just show you right here see from here we are getting our view and when we submit our form we are going to get hit by uh, basically we are hitting this register method right here and from here basically we are going to the validator method and passing all the input fields to this validator method right here okay so this is the case and then uh, once the fields are validated what we are going to do we are going to create a user from right here and basically 
basically all the process is going on right here but it is separated uh, it's an O concept basically aligning our code and separating the files that's it okay so once the fields are validated then we are going to create a user basically this create uh, method exists right here okay so now let's add a field basically let's create the field and here the column name basically here the key parameter is the column name in the database so it would be company underscore name and we want to put the value let's say dollar data and it would be company name basically the data variable we are going to get it from right here basically once the values are validated uh, it is going to Basically, we are getting the data param all the data in the data parameter, and once it is validated, we are passing all the validated fields in the data variable right here, and here we can access the data variable respectively. Okay, so I think it's done from here, and that's it. Now is the time to add our field in the database and for that what we have to do basically here you can see we uh, basically the auth uses eloquent orm so we have to define a newly added or our custom fields in the user model to the fillable properties right here okay and let's say it would be company underscore name that's it okay and now the last step is to roll back our migration let's just stop the project let's say php artisan migrate roll back so we can add our custom fields okay basically you can pass or you can have multiple custom fields in this case this is just for the simplicity and i just wanted to show you that how can you add custom fields now we have successfully rolled back our migrations led let's add a custom field in the user table okay and here i'm going to have a field dollar table and it would be a string and the name of the column would be company underscore name that's it okay so it is done let's just migrate our pro tables php artisan migrate mm, okay so it is done let's just starter project php artisan served and let's just refresh okay <clears throat> okay guys so let's just test our registration form and i will do test one two three and let's say company name would be empty and let's say email would be test one two three at gmail.com and the password would be okay and right here okay let's register our user basically we are getting this please fill out this field from html input right here if we remove the required attribute right here we are going to get laravel error okay let's just refresh and resubmit our form just wanted to show you that okay let's just create a new user test one two three and it should be empty let's say one two three basically it is an email at email.com that's it password would be that's it that's it let's try it out mm, okay so it is done and i think we have an error okay guys so you can see right here the company name field is required let's try the other error let's put minimum two character basically in our case we require minimum of three characters right here okay and let's retype our password okay and let's register again and in this case we are going to see a new error okay guys so you can see we have a new error right here the company name must be at least three characters and if you want to apply your custom validation message you can do that and if you want to you can watch my tutorials on custom fields basically adding a custom error to your input fields okay so let's just log in and basically register and right here let's try a good name company 
company one two three okay let's register our user and let's see what happens and in this case we are successfully registered right here now if you want to see uh, the authenticated user company name or username you can do that let's just do that and for that i will move to resources home blade right here and i'm going to put a condition right here auth check and i will explain it to you in a bit and let's just have h1 and i want auth user company underscore name that's it okay so basically the check right here is to check if any user is logged in if there is any specific user that is logged in i want that specific user company name that's it basically it is just going to check for a user if uh, is there any session available or not that's it let's refresh and let's see what we have okay so you can see we have our company name right here and if you want to access the authenticated basically the logged in user name as well what you have to do you can do just change it slightly and it would be right here i want the username that's it first check if there is any specific user who is logged in if there is any we are going to get the company name and the username that's it let's refresh and here you can see we have the authenticated or logged in user company name and username right here so that was it from this video i hope you guys liked the video if you liked it please like subscribe and share thank you take care